So we're back again in concepts and we're just going to go through some quick tips just to kind of wrap everything up in terms of sketching. So let's just give ourselves a little title here. You know, I'm going to repeat a couple of things that I've been uh, talking about, but I really want you all to understand how important they actually are. Number one is don't worry about being messy. Go jump right in, ask yourself those questions and just keep going. Like you saw, I created a home screen pretty quickly and I started understanding that, you know, maybe we do need these elements here. They're going to probably be useful. And I start learning about what content I can actually get from just like a quick sketch like that. And from there we can actually go in and start refining that a bit more. You know, add icons, figuring out maybe that's an avatar, figuring out what type of information goes in here. Like we found out that we needed a heart and maybe we need a price tag. Most definitely need a price tag, but this is the kind of stuff that it's just a natural progression. And you don't worry about drawing something like this because eventually it's gonna get to something even better and to the product that we eventually built. Don't worry about being messy. Like I said, be lean, agile, sketch quickly, and save yourself some time instead of worrying about the details. The next tip is, you know, it takes a little practice, but only a little. You know, think about it as building blocks. All you need are some squares, rectangles, you know, maybe circles, and you can build a fairly decent UI like we've done before. Like our cart screen is, you know, just, just an X. Whatever text we have there, we have a square, some lines another square to us we understand what we're building here we can refine that if we're going to present it to teammates we got a fairly good understanding of what we need to build a screen like this don't worry about it too much if you want to have a little bit of practice like you can go and open an app that you love or a website that you love and you know try just sketching that out just using some shapes or like some basic type and eventually you'll just develop your own type of system for sketching and there really is no wrong or right way to do it it's just whatever is going to work for you Next tip, keep your sketches safe. Buy yourself a folder, please. I mean, if you're doing it digitally, that's that's great too because like services like this will allow you to like export it in JPEG or whatever file format. It doesn't really matter for sketches like this. If you're using paper, store it in a folder, scan it right away, take a picture, please, because I can't count how many times I've lost sketches that I really needed or I really liked. And sometimes you lose details. Just remember, keep them safe. Always be prepared. Keep a sketch pad near you, a pencil, a pen with you. On my desk at home, I always have my sketchbook. It's a dotted line sketchbook, so it's really easy for drawing wireframes and stuff like that. So keep something with you if you like to draw digitally, like on an iPad, or if you have a tablet that you draw on, like a Wacom tablet. Keep that by your side because you know you never know when an idea is gonna come. You just never know when you need to sketch. Keep it by your side. Another thing I like to do is I like to hang my sketches up. So like, say if I have some sort of like board beside me or a wall, I just like to hang up my sketches for some inspiration. And then I just write additional notes. If I'm working from home, I have my whiteboard that I hang up and it serves as a daily reminder just so I can like see what I've been thinking about. I can maybe scrap some ideas. I can maybe take this new idea that I have and, or this old idea I have, and you know, maybe something else comes from it because I've, taking some time to just take some breathing room. You know, just put it up for yourself. And if you're working with teams, they help as well because other people can kind of get into it and they can start to provide some valuable insight. You want to keep people on your team participating. So that's the best thing I've always found is just put your sketches up, share them. And that leads me to like my next tip over here. My next step is to kind of communicate. Just please communicate. Don't hide these gems that you're making. And I call them gems because like every product starts from something like this. And you know, that may not seem true, but that's what really is the skeleton of your product. They'll always start from like a messy sketch. So share them with people because this is a collaborative process. Share them with your team. Talk to every teammate. It doesn't matter. They'll always provide valuable insights. We talked a little bit about like a certain feature over here where there was going to be a carousel. We'll just quickly draw it again. And if a user swiped left, the new image would come in. And if I were to develop a feature like this or build a feature like this, first person I would talk to would be a developer. And I would like to understand, you know, is this feasible for our timeline? 
what's the best way to do it. And you can have those conversations early on. Next thing I like to do is I, I mentioned it briefly about like putting your sketches up, but some people like to get a big whiteboard and sketch on a whiteboard. And that's totally fine too. I love sketching on whiteboards. Now it's very collaborative and it's easy to involve team members in this discussion. And you know, when you're just drawing screens, everyone can kind of just come in, point certain things out. Because it's marker, nobody really gets tied to the details. Everyone's thinking about like the overall flow. You have so much space. Sometimes you'll be surprised at how fast you can actually fill that up with your whole team. And what I also like to do is I like to pin my sketches there as well. So maybe they have some sort of relation to a certain screen. It's a good jumping off point for yourself. So you can kind of go back to your desk or wherever you're working and uh, start thinking about different things that could relate. And one of the last tips I have, and I do this fairly often, sometimes I'll grab a sketch. So if I have our search experience, like so, it's easy to, you know, it's easy to just sketch these out, but sometimes you don't necessarily get like a feel for the product. You know, that's natural. It's because it's on paper or it's just static. And sometimes you want to understand, like, how does that feel when a user actually clicks this? So what you could do is you can export like individual frames, any which way you want to do it. Like you can export this whole thing here in concepts, this whole canvas, and you can kind of duplicate it and crop it to crop out each individual frame. And you can bring it into Figma and link it together in a prototype. And bam, you have like something super simple and it'll give you a little bit more context on how it will actually work in the digital product. So sometimes I'll do that or I'll scan in a sketch and that will really help me to figure that out if things actually work if while I'm tapping it on a mobile screen. It'll also give me a sense on, you know, these elements need to be bigger than I thought. Maybe it's not going to work here. So like on a home screen, we thought about things like the little hearts, but, you know, maybe we'll realize that that's not really feasible for our user to tap. Maybe it is for larger images on a mobile screen, but maybe if we're thinking about smaller ones, maybe we leave that out there because it's a little confusing and a user may go to tap that and then actually tap into the image when they didn't want to. And where do they go? They go to like that product description page that we've been talking so much about. All these different tips are gonna really help you create a much better user experience. It's gonna help you like drive that communication throughout the whole team, create that collaborative process. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's gonna make you a better designer. It's going to make your users happy. So follow these tips, follow that process we talked about earlier in the lesson. And um, you're well on your way to sketching some amazing interactions and different types of flows.